Next speaker is Rafael Frangillo, and he will talk about quantum information elicitation. All right. Um, I know it's a bit late in the day for the word quantum to show up in your life, so <laughs> let's get through this together. All right. So in the classical setting, right, um, I'll just describe like how does information elicitation is, is basically what Yifan said. So you have an agent with some private um, belief over uh, some, some distribution over outcomes. And you ask them to tell you what their belief is, and but they might tell you some P prime instead of P. And the goal is to design some contract, um, a scoring rule, so that given their, uh, their report, P prime, and the materialized outcome, which from the agent's point of view is distributed according to P, if the agent is maximizing their expected score, then you want to design S so that uh, they report P. Right, so that's a, that's a proper, strictly proper scoring rule. All right, so what's going on in the quantum world? Well, now uh, the agent, instead of classical information, is quantum information. And um, you, know, you can think of this as there's, a, there's an actual quantum state, um, a mixed state, and the agent, um, you're asking the agent what that is. And they have some, some uh, mixed state in mind for what it is, and you ask them to tell you. Um, Obviously, I'm not telling you what a quantum mixed state is, and it kind of doesn't matter for this high-level overview. Um, what's interesting is when you sit down to design uh, a contract now, so they, they tell you some density matrix, which describes the mixed state. And um, so you want to score that depends on the, the report and the outcome. But the outcome, you can't just draw an outcome from a, a quantum mixed state. You have to first choose a measurement. And the most general, th general thing you could do is have the measurement mu depend on the report. So now you have this measurement mu, and I'm not telling you how that works. I barely know myself. Um, and you know, there's this mixed state. And the, from the agent's point of view, again, they have this idea of what rho is, the true mixed state. And the measurement and the mixed state jointly determine a distribution over outcomes. And that's what's going to, um, so the measurement outcome that you see is is drawn from this distribution, which is you know, the true distribution. But it, importantly, it's one degree separated from the actual quantum mixed state. But again, you know, given this slightly more complicated setup, again, the agent is trying to maximize their expected score. And you want to design now both the scoring rule and the measurement function to incentivize them to tell you the, the true mixed state from their point of view. OK. so. Um, let's call such a, a pair S mu that correctly incentivizes the truthful reporting, a truthful quantum scoring rule. Um, so basically, I was trying to figure out what's going on in this space. So very basic questions like, do any truthful quantum scoring rules exist? Can we characterize them? What about if you make restrictions on the, the measurement function and, and things like this? Um, Aside from being fairly fundamental questions um, in, for quantum information in, in this kind of principal agent setting, um, as Yifan mentioned, scoring rules are used in machine learning. And basically, for the same reason, you can use um, truthful quantum scoring rules to solve problems when you're learning from quantum data. OK, so I'll just briefly tell you kind of the high level gist of the results. So it turns out that almost immediately, you can answer the first question using tools from quantum tomography. So um, a measurement is tomographically complete. If basically um, the map from the true mixed state row to the distribution that it induces over outcomes um, when you perform this measurement u is injective, meaning that it's a rich enough measurement that you can figure out what the mixed state would have been if you knew the full distribution over the outcomes. So, if you have such a tomographically complete measurement, then you can just reduce the classical scoring rule setting where you say, OK, you told me this mixed state was rho prime. I'm going to figure out what the distribution of the outcomes would, would be if that was true, and then use a classical proper scoring rule. So um, I'm seeing some blank faces. Um, <laughs> but basically, the gist is you know, if you just are trying to find a truthful quantum scoring rule, it doesn't, it's not too hard, actually. Um, you just come up, you know, read, pull out one of these tomographically complete, complete uh, measurements, and then you're good. Um, so the more interesting question then becomes, does this simple reduction to the classical case actually get you everything? Um, 
all possible truthful quantum scoring rules? It turns out the answer is no, and it's missing a fairly important one, in my opinion, which is like the quantum analog of the log score, which I call the von Neumann score, where the measurement is the eigenbasis of the reported uh, mixed state, and then you apply the log score to the eigenvalues. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> Um, and there's, what's interesting is there's a surprisingly technical reason why it, um, this first reduction misses this. It has to do with um, taking infinite values on the boundary of the set of density matrices. Um, so I also give some you know, more general characterizations. I think what's more interesting, uh, especially interesting here, is properties. So can I design a contract to get someone to tell me what the eigenvectors of the mixed state are? I can do that, but it turns out it can't do that for eigenvalues and entropy. And moreover, if you're familiar with elicitation complexity, which is basically how much information do I need to ask the agent before I can back out what the eigenvalues are, the entropy, it turns out I need as much information as the full density matrix itself. So I may as well just ask them for the, the full density matrix. I think it's a, it's a fun area. There are lots of open questions left, um, but I'll stop there. Thanks.